Hello everyone and welcome to another Top Tips for Archaeology graduates. Today I'm joined by Liz. Liz, how are you? Hi, I'm fine, thank you. Thank you for having me. Uh, well, we're really, gra really glad that you've been able to come along today. So Liz is the lead curator for archaeology and the historic environment at the Museum of Liverpool. Maybe you could talk to us a little bit, Liz, about what that role entails. Yeah, of course. So uh, I look after a small team of archaeologists who care for the collections of the regional archaeology collection at the Museum of Liverpool. So we've got about 100,000 objects that are excavated in Merseyside and the region in the collection, and we display a range of those in the Museum of Liverpool itself. Um, we do a real wide variety of different work at the museum. So we're work caring for the collections, uh, cataloguing those, um, making sure that the collections management and their storage is, is, is up to good, good quality. Um, we're putting them out on display, so we change some of the displays fairly frequently so that we're, we're keeping the um, frequent visitors kind of seeing new uh, material from the collection fairly often. Um, but then we also do a lot of community archaeology. So this summer I've spent time uh, working on the community excavation at the Albert Dock in Liverpool. So um, it's a broad variety of different uh, archaeological engagement work that we do based at the Museum of Liverpool. Wow, that sounds fantastic. What are some of the things that you enjoy about your role? Well, I do enjoy that it is really varied. It's very much project based. So you work on a project which is maybe about a specific period or a specific site. Um, and, you know, you'll get completely engrossed in that. And then, you know, when that's completed, you'll move on to something else. So you're always learning, you're always developing your own skills, uh, always learning about something new. Um, and I find that really interesting. I find you're always having sort of new challenges um, presented to you to, you know, suddenly immerse yourself in a, a new area of the collection and, uh, and learn something new. Um, I work with a, a brilliant team, um, people who are incredibly knowledgeable um, and also very happy to share their knowledge. And I think that's really special um, where people are kind of happy to talk about their collections. I, I love working in the museum stores because we have eight museums in our group. So we have a wide variety of different collections in, in the stores. And uh, sometimes you'll just bump into somebody who's working on a completely different area to you and they'll just tell you about that, that particular part of the collection. And it, 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 it is really special to have, uh, to have that opportunity. Um, so that's that's great. A lot of people say often it's the people and the knowledge of the people around them that kind of leads to a lot of pleasure in, in the job. You're always learning. Can I ask, can I ask the other side of that? What do you find more challenging about your role working as a curator? Yeah, so obviously, you know, all roles come with with challenges. And I think a lot in the heritage sector are around sort of capacity and uh, and resources. Um, so, you know, we tend to be very busy. Uh, we tend to have a lot on our plates at any given time. And that, the flip side of it being very project based is that you can have multiple projects running at once. So, you know, at the moment, we're thinking we need to do the post ex work on the excavation we did at the summer. I'm writing a book. I've got some collections management issues I'm dealing with. Um, I'm also kind of working towards a lot of things that are happening later this year and next year, sort of project managing some gallery changes. Um, so there's, there's a lot going on at any given time. There's never enough money to do all the things that you would really want to do uh, to make the best use of the collection. So, you know, that, that's always kind of that tension really with, uh, with museum work, I think. Yeah, yeah, I can see that. Um, that's a very clear way of expressing, I think, some of those tensions that people people are facing. Can I ask how you got into your role? What's your kind of career history? How did you go from archaeology into working in museums? Yeah, so I, I did my master's at, at York, having done an undergraduate degree at Durham. Um, and then I, after that, I moved to Liverpool for personal reasons. Um, and uh, I knew at that point that I wanted to work in the heritage sector, either museums or historic houses. Uh, my master's was in medieval archaeology and I was particularly interested in medieval buildings. Um, and so I think it could have gone one or two ways. I think I could have ended up in a sort of a, a building uh, kind of manager kind of role for the National Trust or something, or I could have ended up in museums. But landing on my feet in Liverpool, we are blessed with a lot of really great museums and galleries. Um, and so I was able to get a role working part time at front of house in, in one of the museums at the Maritime Museum, um, knowing very little about ships, but, you know, as I say, always learning. <laughs> um, and uh, from, the, from that, I, uh, I then actually went into a role where I was I was working part time and I also did my PhD by distance learning. So I was living in Liverpool and studying by distance learning with uh, Leicester University. 
Um, and then I worked my way through a number of different roles. I always say I'm, I'm one of the few people who's actually worked at every single one of National Museum's Liverpool venues at one point <laughs> or other. So I've, uh, I've done at least a day or two in all of the different uh, venues. Um, and so I worked in the education team, which was brilliant. And I think both those kind of front of house roles were, were great because it meant that I got a really good sense of how people visited what they got out of the visit, what, what they wanted out of the visit, what worked in terms of exhibitions. And so that's sort of things that I've taken right through. And then when I've been working on developing exhibitions myself, I've had that kind of knowledge of hours and hours of spent watching people and galleries, knowing kind of what works and what doesn't. Um, so I think, I think that was a really formative and important period of my career. Um, I became curator of um, archaeology about 10 years ago, looking after the archaeology collection, and then um, was promoted to lead curator about a year ago. So a very varied, um, uh, different trajectory. Uh, you didn't work just in one area of museums, but moved around to different, different areas of museums. Do you think a lot of people do that, or is that something a bit more unique to your, your career trajectory? No, I think it is something a, a lot of people do. Um, and as I say, I think it's a very valuable thing to do. Um, you know, I think it's one of the things that I was very open minded kind of very early on in my career that I was willing to kind of look at lots of different um, options. Um, you know, archaeology has always been my kind of my love, um, yeah. but I was willing to accept that that might not be where I ended up. Um, and you build a lot of experience along the way through working with different um, different teams and, and different uh, museums. So it's uh, it's really valuable to do that. You know, to be open minded about all of those different convoluted routes you might take. Yeah, that's that's good advice, I think. Can I ask you what uh, kind of skills do you draw on from your archaeology degrees and, and, and your, particularly your master's at York? Do you think an archaeology background is good for people working in museums? Yeah, so obviously I'm working with collections that I developed an understanding of through, uh, through my, my degrees. Um, and I think also, you know, as well as that sort of the factual knowledge that you develop through uh, through your qualifications. I think a lot of the sort of, um, I think people often sort of think soft skills were, are equally valuable. So I remember one of the things that I did at, at York was as part of my um, assessment, I was asked to do a, a, a lecture. Um, and uh, that was one of the biggest challenges for me at that point. You know, I wasn't a natural public speaker. It was really overwhelming. I remember kind of, uh, you know, get myself ready and ironing my shirt for it and, you know, just being really uncomfortable. And it's, it's such a d deep memory for me because it, it wasn't it wasn't what I uh, was used to. And actually being thrown into those sorts of situations and learning that you can perform in those sorts of situations was really important to me. Um, and, you know, it's something that, you know, I, I do a lot of talks and engagement and outreach now. And it's only re I can only do that because somebody forced me to <laughs> when, I was at, when I was at York. And, uh, and I, I sort of do look back and thank them for that. Yeah. yeah, I think a lot of people, when I've asked them about the kind of skills that archaeology give, have, have highlighted the amount of public speaking that you do and I think I think there's something unique about archaeology in, in kind of the ways in which we try to communicate our data in a very open way and I imagine you must draw on that a lot in your public outreach now kind of yeah and it's interesting of... archaeology isn't it because it is yeah. those kind of two extremes of you know you'll spend some time just like pouring over a database and then at other times you know engaging with hundreds of people at a time you know and it, it, you need both of those skill sets you need that attention to detail to you know to record things and you know obviously in museums tracking where everything is and what it is and recording all of that information in great detail is, is absolutely crucial but there's no point in doing that if you're not telling people about it as well so you know it's really important to, to have both of those kind of strands uh, in, in your skill set. Yeah. So on that note, can I ask you, what are your top tips then for anyone who wants to follow in your footsteps? I know a lot of our students are interested in the museum sector. What kind of things, what kind of advice would you go back and give yourself when you first graduated? Um, it, it's a tricky sector to get into. Um, I remember being told, um, I think probably when I was at York, so not by somebody from York, um, that uh, museum archaeology was the only field harder to get into than field archaeology and basically being told to give up and it wasn't worth it um, but it was what I wanted to do I wanted to work in the heritage sector in public archaeology um, and uh, I, I had to sort of pers persist with that 
Um, a lot of people do volunteer early on in their careers. Um, you know, I did some volunteering when I first moved to, to Liverpool. I was working five days a week and volunteered on a Saturday morning. And that is useful in just getting a bit of experience that, that will then just help you kind of move into, into a professional job, help you with a with a, a tricky interview question about how to deal with the public if you've done it you, you yeah. know you have those those tips so if you have the opportunity to do a little bit of volunteering that that can be really handy um, and as i said before i think my other tip would be to be pretty open-minded about what routes you might take don't sort of you know don't have a sort of five-year plan i'm definitely going to end up in that area sort of be open-minded about what the opportunities might be there are hundreds of really interesting roles in museums you know National Museums of Liverpool is quite a, a large organisation. We have over 500 staff, so we have people who specialise in, you know, quite quite niche areas of, uh, you know, museums, communication, you know, um, press and marketing, and um, conservation. Obviously, is a whole field of its own as well as the sort of curatorial education and learning. You know, there's there's whole kind of different different areas within uh, the heritage sector that that can all be kind of very interesting careers. Um, if you if you're kind of open-minded about where you might end up. I think that's really good advice because sometimes you don't know what it, exactly it is that you want to do and if you're saying I just definitely want to do this then you might cut off other avenues that you find just as rewarding or even more exciting than, than perhaps what you'd plan to do at the beginning. Exactly. Thank you, Liz, so much for taking the time out of your very busy day to come and talk to us uh, today about uh, your interesting work for the Museum of Liverpool. Thank you, everybody who is watching. Join us again next time for more top tips for archaeology graduates.